Hello students, in this video we'll discuss the log normal model of stock price behavior over time. We're going to assume that stock prices are stochastic processes And that just means they change over time and every time they're random, right? In other words, you have a collection S of T. T is greater than or equal to zero. And each one of these, the price at, at any time is a random variable. The price at any time is random. And our question is, what's the distribution of that random variable? So question. What is the distribution of that random variable, of these random variables? Okay. And so we're going to do two sort of, we're going to use two sort of assumptions when we're talking about these the distributions over here. The first assumption we're going to make is called the efficient market hypothesis. The efficient market hypothesis. roughly speaking, states that prices of the, st the stock price at time 10 shouldn't depend on the stock price at time 0, time 1, time 2. It should only depend on the basically instantaneous future. So the stock price at time 10.00001 should only depend on the stock price at time 10, right? So in other words, this is a Markov assumption that the stock price only depends on the immediate past. Okay? No one queries the price of a certain stock in 1932 if that company was around at that time to figure out what the stock price is going to do tomorrow, right? The company might be bankrupt or the company might be thriving. We don't know. If it's like Coca-Cola might be booming. If it's something other than that, it might be some company that went bankrupt, right? So that's the efficient market hypothesis, okay? The other hypothesis that we're going to do is that if two, if the returns one year return is normal zero one, and this hypothesis is true, then over any time step, then one over n time steps are normal zero one over n, or those are the variances over there. Because the variances are just gonna add up, right? So in other words, if I break up the year over here into n equal pieces, All of those pieces have to have the same distribution, normal zero, n, and they have to be independent of each other. So it's going to be, all these are independent copies of each other. These are independent copies, and they're independent of each other. Okay. So that says the standard deviation basically grows like 1 over n. So the standard deviation is on what scale? The standard deviation is on a scale of 1 over the square root of n. Okay. And then the final thing we're going to assume is that the expected returns and the expected volatilities do not depend on the actual price. They, so the expected, the expected return and expected volatilities don't depend on the price. but rather the percentages do. The relative price. Okay, it's the change in price over the price is what matters actually. So in other words, the change in price over the price itself is the relevant quantity over here. And that should make sense because if you expect, if you have 100 shares in the stock and you expect a 10% return, it shouldn't matter if you have 10,000 shares. If you have 10,000 shares, that person should still reasonably expect the same return. The same with the volatility. If you own $100 worth of a position, then that shouldn't change if you own $10,000 worth of a position. The volatility shouldn't change based on the scale, right? So it's a relative thing. It's a relative ratio over here. So it's the change in the stock price over the stock price. So with these assumptions, we can actually formulate our model now. So our model basically says this. Our model says that the stock price, the change in the stock price, 
is going to be there's going to be a constant drift over a over a time delta t, and there's going to be a volatility over here, sigma over here. S, maybe implied volatility S, and then a delta W, where this delta W scales like what? That's the sort of the increments of the of the randomness of the, the expected returns. That's what's changing. These are normal. These are that's the random part of it, and that's the expected return, right? So you have an expected return which is deterministic, and you have a random component of the volatility. And so of course, what does this uh, delta W change like? This delta W behaves like the square root of delta t. And so that's our sort of our mantra for how these things work over here. And so in the continuous time limit, what happens in the continuous time limit is that these things over here are gonna turn into a delta s in continuous time is mu s delta t plus sigma s delta w. And this dw is the differential of Brownian motion. So here w is Brownian motion. So w is Brownian motion. And so what this allows us to conclude is this allows us to conclude that the following thing. And so if I look at this function over here, and so here's the last sort of stuff. So this is, a, this is our log normal model of stock growth. So that's a log normal model of stock growth, log normal model. And let me explain why it's log normal. If we consider f of s, which is just the natural log of s, and we use Edo's formula, if we recall what Edo's formula is, so Edo's formula says that what does differential equations df satisfy? df is going to satisfy ft plus mu s fs plus one half sigma squared s squared fss dt, that's the deterministic component, plus the random component, which is going to be sigma s fs dw, dw over here. And so let's see what happens over here. We'll notice that the derivative of f with respect to s, so f sub s is 1 over s, and f sub s s is 1 over s squared with a negative sign. And so what df satisfies is the following. So df, the log, is going to satisfy. There's no t dependence. That's gone. I have a mu times s times 1 over s. That's just going to be a mu. It's going to be a mu minus over here. Now this is going to be a minus the s squared is going to cancel with that s squared. It's going to have a minus 1 over sigma squared dt. And then finally, what's this term over here going to be? So now it's just going to be a sigma dw, right? So sigma dw. And now I know exactly what f is. So the log of s, if I integrate this, if I integrate this stochastic equation, what am I going to get? I'm going to get that the log of s, log of s of t over s of 0, is going to be just 1 half mu minus 1 half sigma squared t plus sigma w of t. And therefore, s of t is going to be s of 0 e to the mu minus 1 half sigma squared t plus sigma w of t, and that's Brownian motion. Of course, we know that Brownian motion is normally distributed, right? So this is a deterministic thing over here, and this is a normally distributed thing over here. And so whenever I have an exponential of a normally distributed random variable, we call that a log normal distribution. So this is the log normal model of stock growth, which follows from, basically follows from a couple different assumptions, follows from the relative expected return and the fact that we're assuming independence and in Markov property of the efficient market hypothesis. If I combine all of these financial assumptions, which are completely reasonable, because if you think about the instantaneous return, if you we always think that the stock price only depends on the exact moment of time when you're at. And furthermore, the returns have to be normally distributed independent because the of this exact same hypothesis. What happened two years ago it should be independent of what's happening this year. So those those hypotheses together give us a mathematical model which forces us into a situation where we have a log normal distribution that involves Brownian motion, which we'll investigate in further videos. Thank you very much.